Joining us with his perspective is Congressman John Klein, who is retiring after 14 years in Congress. Welcome, Congressman Klein. Thank you, and good morning, Esme. Absolutely fabulous to have you. I got to ask you, you were a Marco Rubio guy. Did you really expect Donald Trump to win the nomination in the presidency? Esme, I was wrong for over a year on everything about that election, and including uh, Donald Trump getting the nomination and winning the election. I said there was no chance. I think I was like a lot of uh, people, not just Republicans. Uh, but I was proven wrong again and again. And it turns out that Donald Trump touched something out there that most of us didn't see. I mean, I remember when you go to a political rally, even a presidential rally, and you get 5,000 people, that's a big rally. He was doing 20,000, 30,000. So he touched something that I didn't see coming, and now he's the president-elect, and I wish him every success. All right, let me ask you, sir, uh, Republican majorities in the House and Senate, Republican president, mm -hmm. uh, this sweeping agenda, do you think Republicans have to be careful about what they promise? Yes, I do think they have to be careful about what they promise. I do think that they are absolutely right. I'm still one of them for three more weeks, that uh, the American people, by an overwhelming majority, think the country's is going and has been going in the wrong direction. So if you're going to do things to restore America's position in the world, to bring jobs, to let businesses grow, and all of those things, I think the Republican agenda, which is largely shared by both the President-elect and the Republicans in the House and Senate, is a good one, and it needs to move forward. My concern is that there's a lot of talk about Republicans having all the levers of power. But as you know, Esme, in the Senate, it really takes 60 votes to get almost anything done. And so if there's an expectation that the Republicans are going to be able to wave a wand and get things done, that's simply not the case. I think, and I hope, in fact, that they can use the position of being a majority to work with Democrats, to work with the minority, and help move America forward in a bipartisan way. Which gets your policy the last. Right. Well, I mean, let's talk about what I think most people consider your signature achievement, uh, the Every Student Succeeds Act. You were the chairman of the uh, House uh, Education Committee, mm -hmm. Workforce Committee. I, a lot of Republicans aren't on board with that bipartisan talk that you're talking about. Um, what about that? And, and John Boehner, that former House Speaker, who was your close friend, mm -hmm. was forced to out because of this. Well, I, I think that the lesson of Every Student Succeeds Act is the right one. That is, it was bipartisan. We had to work it through. We had to make trades. We had to get support. We had to pass it with the majority of the majority and the majority of the minority, which is very, very important. And by getting the buy-in of both parties, you have policy that will last. Going back to President Obama's period when he had all three of the levers of power, they pushed through Obamacare along with other legislation. And Obamacare had no buy-in from the Republican Party. It was pushed through with 60 Democrats in the Senate. It was all Democrats. And now you see what's happening to it. It's starting to unravel. It just doesn't have the support. If you want your policy to last, whether you're the president or you're in Congress, you need to make a good policy and you need to get buy-in from both parties. Um, and we do want to say, in addition to, of course, your 12 years in Congress, you had such a distinguished military career, and you were also an aide to both Presidents Carter and President Reagan. We've got some of the pictures there to show it. Um, I think most of us just want to say thank you so much for your service for decades, not only to our nation, but obviously the state of Minnesota. Well, it has been an honor and really a pleasure to serve, both in the Marines and in Congress. I feel like I've done a good job representing the people of Minnesota, particularly the 2nd District. It's a lot of public service. It's time to retire. Well, let me just ask you about that. I have spoken with some Republicans who say, gosh, we'd love to have Congressman Klein run for governor in 2018. Very flattering. I am retiring. <laughs> All right. Well, sir, thank you so much. And again, thank you so much for your service, your decades of service, not just to Minnesota, but to the entire nation. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, Esme. All right. Thank you, sir.